Hello, and welcome to our webinar today for scheduling and workflow tools. Uh, it looks like we have people from lots of different regions and time zones today, so uh, thank you for taking the time to come and spend it with us. If you're an existing Sigma Nest customer, thank you for using Sigma Nest. And if you're not, thank you for showing some interest in some of our tools and solutions. Uh, my name is Kevin Keane, and I am the product strategy manager for the Sigma Nest product family. Our main speaker today is Wayne Cathers, and he's the product owner for our business systems division. At Sigma Nest here, we want to do more than just help you get the best Nest and drive your cutting machines. We're also dedicated to providing our customers with a full package solution to drive your business all the way from the quoting stage all the way through the end of the production process. As it becomes more and more vital to all areas of your shops to be connected and passing data back and forth as freely as openly as possible, we're also working with our customers to provide a software solution to manage all of that data. And we want to take advantage of that data with you to drive your shops to be more efficient and successful. One of the ways we can do that is through scheduling features and functionality. I mean, manufacturers and fabricators, especially those to deal with sheet metal, have some unique scheduling challenges that are not faced in other industries. I mean, the most obvious of these is probably how to nest or how to schedule nested programs that may contain parts from different jobs or that might have different due dates. How do we make sure the right programs are being cut in the right order on the right machine? Of course, this is just one of the challenges, but there are many more. We've spent years designing and creating Sigma Schedule and the new features in Load Manager, especially to solve the kinds of scheduling challenges faced by manufacturers and the fabrication industry. Companies in our industry don't need a generic scheduling software solution. They need a specialty solution specifically engineered for their needs. Many of you may already be familiar with Load Manager. It's one of our longstanding products that allows you to assign nested programs to your cutting machines. This is great functionality because the shop scheduling person can release work to the cutting machines in a controlled manner. But Load Manager never told the shop scheduling person which programs should be cut first. He or she had to figure that out on their own, at least until now. The same was true of every other workflow step that happens on the shop floor, whether it was bending, welding, painting, whatever. How does work get assigned to those operations in a controlled manner? Our new scheduling system was designed and engineered for, from the ground up with these challenges and questions in mind. Today, Wayne, our product owner for business systems, will walk you through what we like to call the connected shop environment and will show the most important benefits of our new scheduling solution. I mean, we can help you know at what point in time to program specific parts. We can help you keep your shop on track, even with complex nested programs. And we can help you quickly react and recover to the unexpected by easily rescheduling the current day's workload. I will um, let me now hand you over to Wayne, and uh, he can get, get you into that. Thanks, Kevin. So. For those of you, so again, like Kevin said, thanks everyone for joining so that we can talk about some of the new features and functionalities that we have um, with our new scheduling solution. So the first question that some of you may be having is, where does this whole scheduling solution fit in? Many of you are already using Sigma Nest and, sec and other applications in the Sigma Nest suite of products like Load Manager, Color Offload, or SimTrans to connect with your ERP system. So the question becomes, if I'm adding an extra piece to do the scheduling, where does it fit in? Who's using it? How does it function? Some of that stuff is what we're going to talk about today. At a high level, I'll just note that we have a, a bit of a unique two-part scheduling system that we've designed and, and created over the, over the last couple of years that allows us to both have a powerful scheduling solution that is designed and, and, and works the way that fabricators need it to work, and at the same time, it allows us to be able to rapidly respond to, to different changes. So our two uh, applications that we'll talk about today, the first one is Sigma Schedule. Sigma Schedule is one of our newer applications, and it is a standalone software that you'll install on either your server or a dedicated scheduling computer. And it's kind of a set it and forget it. You install it, turn it on, and then you walk away. You let it run continuously, and then anytime you create jobs in Sigma MRP or in Sigma Quote, Sigma Schedule can be there running in the background to schedule those jobs. 
Now, Load Manager, on the other hand, is an application that will be much more actively used, um, typically by the production manager or shop floor scheduler or however it works in your organization. Um, that person will use Load Manager to release or assign work to the workstations to the shop floor throughout the day. Um, and they'll use it to regularly adjust the schedule whenever there are just whenever we come up to disruptions. So the first major benefit that we'll talk about today um, is that when using Sigma Schedule, Sigma Schedule gives us the ability to know when to program the parts. So because when we schedule, we take into account all the operations, so all the operating steps from cutting, bending, welding, painting, powder coating, even outsourcing. Because we take into account all the steps that are required to produce a particular part, um, we can then calculate when those parts actually have to be cut, and then we can feed that information to Sigma Nest and Sigma CTL so the programmers know what parts need to be programmed next. So let's take a look at that. So I've got a job here. We'll look at job number 11, and I'll drill down into the details of the job. Here I've got a few parts, including an assembly. So I've got these two parts here, P1 and P2. Uh, both of them are going to be cut on my oxygas machine. And both of them have quantity 100. And both of them are due on the 17th. Now in the same job, I've got P3. It's got a little bit less quantity, but it's due on an earlier due date. So even within the same job, I can have multiple line items that are due on different days. So here I've even got an assembly. In this example, it's a park bench. To produce the bench, you, I have to cut some Sigma Nest parts. So this part, for example, has to be cut, and then it has to go to the press break. Now for all your different assemblies, you might have other operations up the tree, like powder coating and assembly. Now all of these operations have to be taken into account to know when we actually need to cut the parts. So I've already scheduled this job, and in a second we will look at the production module, and we'll be able to see when those parts are scheduled to cut. So I'll just quickly highlight again that both of these parts, P1 and P2, are supposed to be um, cut due on the 17th, which means they're going to have to start earlier, and they may even have to start on different dates to make sure they're both done on time. P3 is due on the 14th, and the entire completed bench is due on the 24th. So let's take a look at the production module. So here in job 11, we look at P1. So P1 again, remember, is due on the 17th, but we the scheduling engine has told us that we need to start cutting it on the 15th. Now P2, which has the same due date, because P1 is taking up most of my day on the 16th and the 15th, this, the system tells us that we have to start cutting P2 on the 14th, so we can have it done on time. Now, next is P3. So P3 was due on the 14th, so it tells us, hey, you have to start cutting it on the 13th, so you can have it done on time. And then the cutting operation for the park bench has to start two days before it's due to make sure we have time for all those secondary operations. Now, let's see how we feed that information to Sigma Nest so your programmer knows. So here we'll view our list of work order parts. So the programmer comes in for the day and sees all the parts that have to be programmed. We'll filter by work order 11 and we'll see that P1 is due on the 15th. So the operator doesn't, the programmer doesn't have to go try to back calculate when the part needs to be programmed so that it can be cut on time. We've done that heavy lifting for you. He just knows that it has to start cutting on that date. P2 is on the 14th, P3 is the 13th, and then the seat bench uh, is on the 22nd. Now, what were to happen if there was a change? What were to happen if a user called it or the customer called in and said, hey, this P1 part, I need that a couple days or sooner. Um, can you get that to me a little bit sooner? <clears throat> so we can come into the job. And again, whether you're using MRP or Sigma Quote, you can access the job. We can change the due date on a particular line item. Um, so remember that whenever we change due dates on line items, um, the system recognizes each individual line item's due date. So if you need to just change a single line item, you can do that. 
And later on, I'll show you how we can change the due dates for um, all the line items all at once. So for here, I've changed the due date for just P1. And now I will um, open up Sigma schedule so we can take a look. So here I've just started the rescheduling process. So what Sigma schedule does is multiple times throughout the day, you can set it up to do this automatically, or you can do what I'm doing here so that we can show it in the demo, um, is you can come click the button. What it does is it looks at all of the operations, all the routing steps um, that in some type of production status in your uh, in your shop that have not been released out to or assigned to your workstations to your shop floor everything that's not been assigned it pulls it out of the schedule and then so it can start with a blank slate and then rebuilds the master schedule to account to accommodate any of those changes due date changes new jobs that have come in priority changes things like that now back in sigma nest We'll look and see that Sigma Schedule has updated our work order parts or our work order due dates. So the programmer still knows when to cut the part, when to program the parts. So P1, you'll see, is now due a few days earlier because the part is due earlier, so we have to cut it earlier. And we'll see that P2 actually gets to be cut later because P1 is not taking up all of my capacity on the 15th and 16th. So I can now cut P2 closer to when it's actually due. So now is an opportunity for you guys to ask some questions. So we'll bring Kevin back. Wayne, uh, thanks for that great introduction to the Connected Shop. Um, if there are any questions, you can type them into the stage chat area on the right side. But one question that we do often get when we're talking directly with customers is, Wayne, can we schedule some work to be done just in time and other work to be done immediately? Is that something yeah. that the software can handle? Absolutely. So in our system, um, we phrase it as forward and backward scheduling. Backward scheduling is what you would think of as just in time. We start with the due date in mind and the last operation, and we build the schedule backward so you know when to start the parts. And then you can also forward schedule a job, which is to say, I want to get the job and all the parts done as soon as possible. So start as soon as I have available capacity and finish it as soon as possible. And that can be set up per individual job. Wow, that's that's really great. And um, remember, you can continue to type any questions into the stage chat. Uh, you can also look at the handout with the pain points and see which ones you suffer from the most. Uh, but for now, I'm going to hand it back to Wayne, where we're going to learn about the capabilities and benefits of scheduling even after nesting your parts. Thanks, Kevin. So the next major benefit we'll talk about is scheduling even after nesting. So most of us, uh, most of you guys probably, if you're not using something like a whiteboard or an Excel, you may have an ERP system or other software that you use for scheduling. Um, but one of the biggest pain points for most customers, especially in our industry where we are nesting, is that once the parts have been nested, it, that's kind of where the scheduling engines fall apart. The scheduling engines and all the other scheduling softwares on the market don't really have the ability to understand that that a particular part is spread out across five or six different sheets or maybe even more. So we, we can't recognize that the uh, cutting operation is done until all of the sheets are done. So because our system has a direct integration with the CAD CAM software, such as Sigma Nest and Sigma CTL, um, we can track which parts are on which programs, and then we can actually schedule those programs to be cut in order based on which parts are on those programs. So let's take a look at that. So here I have a few jobs. I've got job 14 through job 18. Different customers, different orders. Um, a few of them have a due date of the 2nd, 6-2. One of the jobs has an earlier due date at 528, And then one of the jobs has a bit of a later due date at 6-3. Now, all of these parts have the same uh, material and same thickness for the same machine, so I want to nest them together. Let's take a look at the list of work order parts, and we'll just highlight real quick job 14 through 18. And we'll see that the due dates match what we have in the job. So job 17 is due a little bit earlier on the 27th. Some of the other jobs like 16 and job 18 are due on the 1st. 
And then job 14 is due last on 6-2. So I'll bring all these parts into the workspace. <coughs> now, in this instance, I've got coloring set to color by work order. So the green part here represents job 17. So that's the one that is due the soonest. And then I have other parts like the pink ones and these blue ones. The blue parts represent work order 14. So those are the ones that are due last. So now I want to nest these parts for production. I've already made the order. Now it's time to produce them. So we'll come in. We'll make a new task. And in this instance, I'm just going to nest for material efficiency. So I'm just trying to get with material prices the way they are today. We want to get as much use out of that material as possible. So I'm just going to do part ordering by gross area, and I'm not going to put any extra restraints like grouping. I'm just going to let Sigma S do its thing and give me the most amount of yield as possible for these parts. So we're going to let Sigma S nest. Once it's done nesting, we'll go and we'll take a look at how many parts, um, sorry, how many sheets it took to nest all the parts. Um, and then we'll specifically look at how much of that last sheet was used to get an idea of material yield. So Sigma S is done. We can see that it took us 13 sheets. And then if we look at that last sheet, we can see that it used about 30 inches. Now, if we look at all of the sheets at one time, so we'll take a look at all of them. What you'll notice is that the work order parts are, are intermixed together. Different work orders, different jobs, different due dates. So you might be thinking, Wayne, we can't do this. This is way too, way too spread out. We, we can't keep the shop organized. To get these green parts, which are due first, I'm going to have to cut five, six, ten different sheets, and there's going to be a bunch of extra parts laying around while we're waiting to cut all of them. We don't have the shop floor space for that. Well, one of the, ben one of the major benefits we have of Sigma Schedule is because Sigma Schedule can calculate and determine when those parts are supposed to be cut. We can actually use that to inform our nesting. We can tell Sigma Nest that we want it to group the parts by their due date. So all the parts that have a similar due date, when they're supposed to be cut, not when the par parts are supposed to be done, but when the parts are supposed to be ready for the machine to be cutting. Um, we, parts with a similar due date can be nested and grouped together. Now, typically when we do this, we're going to give up a little bit of material yield, but it'll help with the organization of the shop floor tremendously. So, nesting is done. Looks like we still use 13 sheets, which is good. And on this sheet, we ended up using a little bit more material. So instead of the 30 inches, it stretched an extra 20 inches to, a, to a 50 inches of that last sheet. But whenever we look at all the sheets together, we can see that it grouped those work order parts based on their due date a lot better. So all the blue parts are stuck together. And then all these pink, light blue, and purple parts, they all have the same due date. So they all get mixed together to give me some really good yield. And then the green parts are um, for job 14, which is due, or sorry, is for job 17, which is due soonest. They're all grouped together. Now what we can do with Sigma Schedule, because Sigma Schedule has the ability to look at all of those programs, and it knows which parts are on which programs, it can schedule and tell us which program needs to cut first. So before we do that, I have to apply the NC. So get toolpath applied. Now I'll post out the programs. And quick note, at the bottom of the list is program 45 and 46. These are the programs that have those green parts, the parts that are due the soonest. So we'll get these posted out. And then we'll quickly hop back in to Sigma Schedule and give it a re give it a reschedule. Now remember that in your typical workflow, on, like as, as you're working in live production, you're not going to have someone that's coming in and clicking the reschedule button every time you make a nest or every time you add a job or change something in a job. Um, we would set Sigma Schedule up to regularly reschedule the shop two or three times a day, so maybe once at lunch and then once at the end of the day. Um, so then you would just wait till it hits its rescheduling cycle, and then it would rebuild the master schedule for you. Here, and while we're doing the demo, we want to show everything in real time, um, so we're just coming in here and manually um, activating the reschedule event.
All right, so now everything's been rescheduled. Now we will hop into Load Manager, which again is the application that will be used by the shop scheduler to release or assign work to the workstations to, to the shop floor. We see our laser machine. And then here in our unassigned program list, we can see that those programs have been scheduled and ordered for us. Notice that 45 and 46 are at the top of the list. So they're due to start cutting on the 27th. And then we have the other programs. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the program list is programs 34, 35, 36, and 37. Because there's those are those blue parts which are due last. But what if we made a change and uh, we now need to get these blue parts done before the other parts, the pink and the purple parts? We can come into job 14, which is those blue parts. And then we can edit the whole job at once and we can change the due date for all the parts all at the same time. In this instance, we'll say that we need them to be done a couple days sooner. We'll save. Yes, I want to update the due date for all the parts. And then again, because we're in a demo uh, and we want to show you guys how this uh, all this works together in real time, we're going to do the manual reschedule event. Um, but again, in real shop workflow, you would just change it, wait a couple hours until um, your full reschedule event cycle time is supposed to happen. Like I said, oftentimes it's at lunch or at the end of the day, and then the master schedule gets rebuilt. So now whole master schedule has been rebuilt. So now let's go back and look at load manager. And when we do a refresh, we'll see that those programs 34, 5, 6, and 7 were moved to the top of the list. Not as early as 45 and 46, but before all the other programs. So instead of having to re-nest all the parts or having to find where all the parts are across all the programs, Sigma Schedule can do that ordering, sorting, and scheduling for you. All right, now time for another Q&A session. Wayne, uh, thanks very much for giving us a rundown of the scheduling process, especially as it applies to nested sheets. Um, so we'll take a couple of questions. Wayne, one question here that came in from uh, an audience member is, will the scheduler show delays on inbound inventory? So the scheduling system does not currently take into account uh, material availability. Um, we're working on some different features and getting feedback from a number of different customers. Um, everyone kind of wants the material availability checking to work a little differently. Uh, so we're taking some feedback from a bunch of our customers to see exactly what is the best way to implement that. Perfect. Now, I remember uh, that coming up in some conversations that was on the on deck. Um, and next, not next question, one question that comes in fairly often. What what if I only nest some of the parts fulfilling a partial order, for example? I mean, maybe there's a delivery date change, maybe there's a down machine, you know, maybe there's some other problem. Will, will the system schedule the nested program and then the remainder of the parts that are not nested yet? Can it manage that situation? Sure can. So whenever we initially schedule a job, before there's ever a program that exists, before there's anything's been nested, we schedule the parts as individuals because we know they're going to take up some time. Um, and then once you nest, let's say you've got 50 of a part that you have to cut and you've nested 20 of them. Well, then when you do that reschedule event, we'll reschedule the nest for the quantity of 20, and then we'll still schedule quantity 30 for the remainder because we know it's going to take up some time once you've programmed it. Okay, gotcha. Very good. Um, another question just came in. Does the does the system help take into account capacity planning? Um, and I'm not exactly sure what capacity planning means here for this for this particular customer, but uh, broadly speaking. Yeah. So Sigma Schedule and Load Manager both they look at the capacity that you have on your machines. So they you 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 will enter into the system's calendar when each machine or each workstation has availability to work. So the time of the day that it works, um, and then you can also input things like scheduled maintenance, holidays, things like that. Um, and if you have multiple of a particular machine, if you've got a bending operation and you've got five press breaks, the system takes into account the capacity that you have from all of your different machines and schedules accordingly. Ah, very good. Well, that, that's pretty comprehensive. Um, well, seeing as I think that's the questions we have for this, let me uh, hand it back to you again, where we're going to learn about how to react to unexpected changes to the schedule. When What happens when things go wrong? 
All right. Thanks, Kevin. All right. The last major um, benefit key point that I want to show you guys today um, is that we have the ability to quickly react to disruptions. So again, unlike a lot of other scheduling systems on the market, which are kind of a, a, a one size fits all scheduling engine, um, our scheduling engine is, like I said earlier, it's, it's this unique two part system. One part is Sigma schedule. It's what I've been showing so far, which which orders all of your jobs. It schedules all your programs. It gets everything in order and tells you what order you need to cut everything. Now, the second part of the equation is load manager, which is used to release the work to the shop floor. We, we call it assigning, assigning that work to your workstations. Now, a lot of times in most other systems, if there's a disruption that happens, if a machine goes down or press break stops working or whatever the situation is, you don't have time. Or you don't want to wait for the master schedule to be rebuilt. You just want to fix the problem as it is right now. Um, so with our two part system with load manager, you don't have to throw away the schedule. We can just fix it for today. So we'll, let's look at that now. So in this job here, I had, it's job 13. I've got a number of different parts. Um, some of the parts, for example, um, only have a single operation. So for example, this part, I just have to cut it and then it's ready to be shipped out the door. Some of the parts have extra operations, for example, uh, bending operation. So this part has to be cut and then it has to go to the press break. And then some of our, some of the parts in this job have um, more than one next operation. Um, so we've got a few different routing steps, cutting, bending, powder coating. Now I've already um, nested, posted, and rescheduled this job. So let's go take a look at load manager. So here in load manager, I can look at my unassigned program list and we can see all the programs that I posted out. So all these programs are for that job and they've already been scheduled, but they just haven't been released to the shop floor yet. And now we can see all of the secondary operations, the bending and the powder coating that has to happen for all of those parts for job 13. So now I will assign all of those parts. I'll assign those parts um, to the workstations and it'll assign everything that's supposed to start today. So it limits it to today in this instance. So we can see all those programs that I posted have been assigned to their respective machines. And then the bend, the parts that have to go to the press break afterwards, we've scheduled time for those parts to be bent. And because I have two press breaks, so kind of what the comment was talking about earlier, because I have two press breaks, it balanced the load. Now we'll look at this powder coating operation. It's got a part that has splits that split across three programs. It goes to the press break and then it's powder coated. Now, again, like I talked about before, we hit one of those situations where the part is stretched across three programs. So most scheduling engines don't have the ability to know that that part is across three programs. So we can't do the next operations until all three of these sheets are cut. But we're able to, to see that connection. Now, what were to happen if the um, operator for the laser calls in or he says, hey, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to be a couple hours late. We're going to have to take all of these programs and shift them to the right because he's not going to be here for a while. If we move those to the right, then we're going to have to move this bending appointment to the right. Well, if we move the bending appointment to the right, we're going to interfere with these bending appointments. And once we move everything else, we're going to have to move the powder coating, which might interfere with another powder coating operation. And you get this snowball effect. I'm sure all of you all are familiar with it. You move one thing and you feel like you have to move 50. So. Instead of having to throw the schedule out um, or wait for the entire master schedule to be rebuilt, we can handle the disruption in a, in a smaller scale and look at just the work that's been assigned today and we can fix that. So we'll take a look at this powder coat operation just to see that it's going to be scheduled to start at 313. So I want you to see that so whenever we fix the schedule, we can see that it's moved. So I'll come to my... <coughs> my laser and I'll just add a downtime. We'll tell load manager, hey, the machine is down. Um, it's down. I'm just going to give it a note because the operator is late. And then you put in your downtime. So whether it's one hour, two hours, two and a half days, whatever your time frame may be. I'll put in a couple hours here. And then we'll click OK, OK. 
Now, before we fix the schedule, I'll just give it a refresh, and I'll show you that we now have that downtime built in. So now we need to push everything off to the right. So we'll click the Resolve button. The Resolve button looks at all the work that's been assigned. So think of it as all the work that's been released to your workstations for today. And then it pulls it out and reschedules that work based on the new capacity. And you now are lost a little bit of capacity because of that downtime. So the programs were moved to the right. The bending operations were moved to the right based on the programs which were moved to the right. And we can see that this powder coating operation now starts, is scheduled to start at 441. So, and that's because it's bending operation and the prior cutting operations were all moved and adjusted to compensate for the downtime. Now we can show this in real time back in the office. Whether you're using Sigma Quote or Sigma MRP, we can come into the production module, drill down and find that particular operation, 129, it was that powder coating operation, and we can see that the time has been adjusted in real time. So even uh, people in the back office can see those adjustments and how those are, are faring out for the schedule. Now, if we had a, a more severe disruption, maybe one of the press breaks goes down. You have a hydraulics issue or you broke a clamp so you can't put tools in it, whatever the situation might be. We can just come and turn the workstation off completely. I'm not sure how long it's going to be down, so I'll just turn it off. Worst case scenario. And we say Sigma, and then we say load manager, fix a schedule for me. Take those appointments that are scheduled for the press break one, move them on to press break two, and reorganize my schedule to compensate for the fact that now I only have one press break. So all those appointments are moved to the side. Um, and then the powder coating operations will be adjusted as well because I only have the one press break available. All right, last Q&A session. Uh, perfect, Wayne. We have a few questions uh, here from the, the audience again. One question is, can the scheduling system highlight when we cannot make all the parts in a required shift and then recommend using our lasers in lights out mode to make up the time? So the scheduling software, so in the production module, again, either Sigma Quote or Sigma MRP, um, every time we do a reschedule, um, then there's a particular tab in the software that will show you when jobs are scheduled to be late. So if a job is scheduled to finish past its due date, you'll have a visual indicator of that. Now, the scheduling system won't automatically try to come up with alter like altered um capacities like add capacity to one machine or change to another but it does give you clear indication when based on your capacity and based on your schedule a job is going to finish late that makes sense and because each co each company then may have decisions about what to do once they have the notification you know whether it's right. uh you know bringing another machine in adding a shift going to overtime labor hours or like this customer going to lights out mode with the equipment that makes sense uh, next question, will Sigma schedule work with data from outside ERP systems or just Sigma MRP? Uh, if it works, if it does work with outside systems, how does that process work? How does that happen? Yep, it's a good question. So technically the answer is that our scheduling software works in our own system. You wouldn't go have Epicor, for example, try to schedule stuff that's coming from SAP. So it looks at the jobs that exist in our system and it schedules those jobs. Now, having said that, we just like we can um, use Simtrans, so some of you may be familiar with Simtrans, it's Simtrans is a software that we have that allows us to communicate back and forth with ERP systems, for example. Um, so it's been used for years and years for things like work orders. You make an order in your ERP system, you use Simtrans to then push that data into our system, and then Sigma Nest has work orders that kind that came from the ERP system. We can do that same that same type of setup here, um, but we can use Simtrans to take data from the ERP system and then automatically create a job in our system. And then once the job exists, we can schedule the job. Perfect. Now that makes that makes perfect sense. Um, one question that's been asked and even answered here, but I'll I'll, I'll ask it for the benefit of everybody. Um, how does the system know that the job has been successfully processed through each of the routing workflow steps on the shop floor? Yep, perfect, perfect question. So um, with 
with any scheduling system, you can't just schedule on the back end. You have to get data on the front end. You have to have something on the shop floor that's telling the system, hey, this part has been cut. This part's been bent. Um, so for that, we have two different pieces of software. One is color offload. So some of you may already be familiar with color offload. Um, it's used for your um, Sigma Nest machines, so lasers, plasmas, water jets, punch machines, what, what have you. Um, and it's used to then report back to the system when programs are done cutting, when they're started, when they're stopped, all that info. And then for all of your non Sigma Nest operations, bending, welding, painting, um, we have a web application called Shop Floor Data Capture that allows you to report back. Uh, on each of those parts, uh, what status the part is in, whether it started, stopped, or finished. Perfect. Yeah. So shop floor data capture really is the is the piece where you know every work center out on the shop floor <laughs> has access to that in some way, so that uh, operators can say yes, this piece got done, and then the system just works the magic for everybody else. Exactly. And not only does it allow the operator to feed back, but shop for data capture is also used as a paperless system to feed data to the operator. So whenever we schedule something and ever we um, uh, release work in load manager to the workstations, load manager or color offload and shop for data capture, then show the operator in order that the um, parts and appointments were assigned to their workstations. So they'll know what they have to cut. Um, in order. So it helps to eliminate a lot of that paper trail. We can do it all live digitally. Well, I mean, and that makes a great point as well, because it's digital. I mean, you know, the paper itself is a bottleneck independent of any of the work centers. So just the exactly. fact that the update is digital and makes it real time is its own bonus. I mean, nobody is looking for the newest version of the paper. Exactly. Um, next uh, question here. Can we set a minimum move time between operations so, for example, parts are cut one day and not bent until the next day. That, I mean, that sounds like a little bit of where we understand it's going to take time just to stage the stuff from one machine into another machine. It could be in another building or what have you. So there's some, there's a, there's a, you know, a, a, another an operation that might be transports or something between them. How does that work? Exactly. So for each operation, and you can you can change this per individual operation on each part on each job, or you can set it as a default. Um, you can give a we call them operation gaps. You can set a gap of time before and after every operation. So for a bending, for example, if you set a before gap of a day, then then after the prior operation, so in our example, was like laser operation, then bend, then the bend would not be allowed to be assigned or scheduled um, except for one day, at least one day after the laser operation. You can also okay. put in after gaps. So some of our customers have powder coating operations. And once you produce the part, you want it to sit for a while. Let it, you know, whether it's painting or powder coating, you want to leave it alone for a while. You can also add in an after operation gap. So the system can take all of that into account. Now, that makes perfect sense. I mean, the powder coat has to cure. Otherwise, we would have another schedule change where we do it again. Exactly. So we, can, we can accommodate you either way. Uh, next question, can the system give us estimated lead times for, for the quoting side of the problem? Yes. So, so let me, if the question is, can the system uh, run a job through the schedule when it's in a quoting stage before I even accept the order? If that's the question, then the answer is yes. So the system allows you to schedule a job even when the job is in a quote stage. So if a customer says, hey, I need these parts, all the price, everything looks good. Can you have it in four days? You can say, give me a minute. You can schedule the job. It runs the job through the schedule, and it will give you an estimated finish time um, based on the current capacity of all your machines, based on your current schedule, and what the new job has. Perfect. Uh, thanks, Wayne. Um, next question. Uh, how does it deal with schedule overruns, and will it report on this? Now, I'm not perfectly clear what schedule overruns means in this case, but um, take a have a go at it. So, it, uh, like you, Kevin, I'm not exactly sure what's what's meant by schedule overruns. Now, I know a lot of scheduling systems on the market, um, SAP, Job Boss, I think both do this. It's pretty somewhat common um, where they'll let you um, over schedule for a particular workstation. So if your workstation only has eight hours to run today, um, a lot of other scheduling softwares will let you assign 10 or 12 hours of work 
Um, oh, no. Our system doesn't doesn't do that. We look at true capacity, what the operations and the workstations have available to do work, and then we schedule accordingly. Okay, okay, that makes sense. If if there's a more detailed question there, you can certainly send it in, you know, after the fact, and we can, we'll, you know, we'll we'll attempt to answer it in in, in a better, more detailed way for you. Um, but uh, next question: Can the shop floor data capture allow two operators working on the same job at the same time? Or is it restricted to you know a single, or or, does, or will it allow a single person to work on two or more jobs at one time? I think I know the answer to this, Wayne. Yep, it will let. It does allow. There are features and functionalities in Shop for Data Capture to allow it you to record that multiple users um, are processing the same um, the same operation. So, for example, welding is a big one. If you got you know if you're welding a big assembly, you're welding a whole tractor together. Um, you might have two or three people that need to weld on it at the same time, and you want to record the fact that you've got two or three welders working on it. Um, that that can be recorded. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and I, I know that's that's it's pretty normal for, in the real world for that to happen. Have one operator running multiple machines, and sometimes you know two people bending large parts and this type of thing. Uh, next question, and this one is not really clear: Is it possible to switch between a laser plan to a plasma plan during the night shift? I mean, obviously, the first thing we'd be thinking of is we don't know if there's reprogramming necessary or what really the full scope of the change is. So, but um, but is it you know is it possible to basically move a job from one work center to another? Is what it sounds like. Um, so I'll give you a, a long and a short. So, well, I'll just give you the long. The long answer is that once the programs are posted, so we only build one schedule. We build one master schedule. If you've got the parts, are supposed to be laser cut parts. We schedule them, assuming that you're going to cut them on the laser. Now. If they're supposed to be laser cut parts and you decide to program them in Sigma Nest on your plasma machine, so the job says, hey, I got laser cut parts, but then they're nested on a plasma machine, um, the system does take that into account. It will schedule those programs and those parts, um, and it will consume the capacity of your plasma machine. And then in load manager, it will assign them to your plasma machine. So you can make you can make those changes. Um, load manager also lets you drag and drop and uh, move programs from one pro from one machine to another, as long as those machines are in the same Sigma Nest uh, machine group. Now, and I'll add to that a little bit because the same uh, the same person asked a question. But what about the support of beveling machines? You know, when moving work from one machine to another, you know, we always have the question of machine compatibility. And Sigma Nest parts themselves can be compatible with, you know, a subset of your machines or all of your machines, and that can be set up. So there's, you know, there's a there's definitely a deeper set of questions there for those kinds of situations. You couldn't run a part that required beveling on, you know, a machine that didn't have it, for example. But that can be, you know, drilled into in more detail, you know, at a different time. Um, let me ask another question that came in from the the audience. What about overlap operations? You know, while the laser is still cutting, can we start feeding the press brakes with the parts already cut? I mean, yep. that... so the way the system is designed currently, and we're looking at different options um, in future releases um, on how best to handle this and what options to give our customers. The way the system is is set up right now <clears throat> is that. Uh, we don't schedule or assign the next operation, like the bending operation, to start until the entirety of the prior operation is completed. Um, so from a scheduling standpoint, it won't schedule the bending operation to start until, until after all of the programs and all the cutting operations are done. Now, on, in reality, on the shop floor, um, a user can see those bending operations in shop floor data capture. And if they want to start them early, that's fine. They can click start them early. They'll get a little notification that says, hey, the prior operation isn't done. Are you sure? They can just click yes and move right on forward. And then we'll record that data. Um, and then that, that data is used when doing scheduling later on throughout the day. You know, and that makes perfect sense that that's how it would be because you you know you can't predict from the outside you know either the the rate at which the prior operation will complete uh, or guarantee it. So you you know you you keep the availability for the other machine open until such time such time as you can commit the the job to it. So yeah, the fact that shop floor data capture allows them to just start at will and get ahead that's that that's perfect and then of course that will reflect in a cleaner schedule later right the next time the uh, the automatic uh, update happens exactly perfect uh let me see 
Next question to come in. If a job has several different materials to be cut, will this take that into account when scheduling? Um, now, I'm not sure exactly what that means by different materials. I suppose we mean maybe different parts from different types of material, maybe. Sure. If you've got a job that's got, maybe it's got an assembly where you're going to build a whole tractor and you got a bunch of different parts with a bunch of different materials and thicknesses on different machines. Um, or if you're doing job shop type work and a customer orders some mild steel stuff and some stainless steel stuff, different thicknesses, different materials, all that's taken into account by the scheduling engine. So it'll schedule um, the scheduling engine. Um, whenever it schedules the parts, it's not really looking at the material that the parts are on. It's more looking at the machine that's assigned to those parts. So it takes up the capacity of that machine. And then whenever you post the programs, um, Sigma Nest uses, it, it uses then Sigma Nest's time, estimated time calculation of those programs to know how long that program is going to take. And that is based on the material and the thickness. Ah, perfect. That makes sense. Um, I have one last question here. So, you know, given the amount of, you know, things that happen on the shop floor, I mean, and, and the changes we want to adapt to, but, you know, we don't want to also, you know, stop every machine unnecessarily. So is there a way to make sure that the order of the programs doesn't change for some machines while I'm, you know, when, when I'm resolving the schedule? Maybe the material is already staged at the machine or it's a complex setup, so I want to immunize that from the change. Is there a way to, to lock out some jobs or some processes? Yep, absolutely. That was one of the that was one of the first things we considered when we talked about um, in the early days when we were talking about um, automatically fixing the schedule once it's already been assigned out to the shop floor. Um, the last thing we want to do is kind of yank the rug out from underneath the operators on the floor. Um, so if you have so for lasers example, um, lasers is typically the perfect example. You got a bunch of sheets; they're going to cut real quick. So the operator may go and stack. 10, 12, 15, two or three hours maybe worth of sheets in order of what they're supposed to run. Um, in Load Manager, you can quickly grab all those programs that have already been assigned to the machines, um, right click, and then there's a button called Lock. It locks them into place, keeps them right there, and then anytime you do the resolve or the reschedule or what have you, um, those appointments are locked into place and the, and the system doesn't allow them to move. Perfect, perfect. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, one question here is, is it possible to nest or group by priority for the same due date? And I can speak to that one a little bit up front. I mean, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, Sigma Nest has a, a whole set of tools for allowing you to, you know, prioritize. And it, it can be by due date, it can be by job, it can be by order. And, and you can even have it be very strict or allow some mixing. Because, you know, we recognize, like right at the beginning we said, our goal is not to help you just put parts on the sheet as the best nest. Um, in the past, the best nest just meant the most parts. But when we're talking about the connected shop, the best nest is the nest that sets up all of the downstream activity to be the most efficient and profitable. So whether that means keeping a job together so that it can be more efficient on a press break, or whether it means really getting the best yield because the material is really expensive in this case, there's a balance there. And I'd say one of our strengths really is helping you work out the balance for your shop to figure out where the sweet spot is in terms of, you know, how you really make your money, depending on the arrangement of your shop. I mean, so I, I mean, I think that more or less, you know, is really how that works, Wayne, right? Exactly. So um, in the um, in the the one of the sections when I was talking about nesting, um, we went and we on that second page of the task parameters for those of you all that are uh, fam as familiar with Sigma Nest, um, we told it to group by the work order. Well, on the first page, there's actually a setting that uh, that tells it to sort by the work order due date. So there's a quick setting that just tells Sigma Nest, hey, whatever parts are due soonest, nest those first. Um, and because we have Sigma schedule in a scenario like this where we have Sigma schedule, um, Sigma Nest knows for sure which parts have to be cut first because of the downstream operations and due dates and everything. So Sigma schedule tells you when the parts have to go, and then you can use that information to nest in all kinds of ways, including by prioritizing the due date. Perfect. Um, one question here that came in is, will the schedule parts automatically load into Sigma Nest? And I'm not sure if that means from, you know, once a quote is being generated or what exactly that means, but I'll let you pick it up. Sure. 
once you make a job, whether you've made that job in Sigma MRP or Sigma quote, um, once you take that job and you convert it from a quote into an order, so you say, yep, customers ordered it, the, we need to produce these parts. Um, a, the Sigma Nest work order is automatically generated. No extra steps needed. It automatically creates that work order inside Sigma Nest. Perfect. Uh, Wayne, can the load manager automatically create a new program when switching from one machine to another with different parameters? So load manager doesn't, but Sigma Nest can. So for example, if you have two lasers, if you've got a, a 5K laser and a 10K laser, um, if you put those lasers into the same group inside Sigma Nest, then when you post out for one machine, Sigma Nest will actually generate um, two programs. It'll generate a program for the 5K laser and it'll generate a, a program for the 10K laser. Um, we will schedule whatever you posted to. So if you originally posted on the 5K, we'll schedule um, the time for that program against the 5K laser. But in Load Manager, if you need to take that 5K program, your 5K laser goes down and you say, man, I just need to put this on my 10K instead, or the opposite, or, or the opposite. If you have a 10K and you want to put it on your 5K, um, you can just drag and drop that program as long as those machines are in the same group, um, and then it will use that new program, the program posted for the um, for the other machine. I mean, that, that makes perfect sense. That's how it works. Sigma Nest is the brains behind uh, some of that, right? Exactly. So I think with the, we'll, we'll uh, begin to wrap this up here for today. If there's any more questions uh, or any more pain points that uh, you, know, that you haven't uh, heard us talk about, you can definitely reach out to us and, you know, and ask about those or, or, or see if we have any um, you know, plans in play to help deal with those. But if you go to the Expo page uh, that was uh, right on the landing page for the, 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 the webinar here, uh, there'll be some downloadable resources. Uh, there's the handout that describes the pain points that got us started here, and the recording of the webinar will be available shortly after the live presentation. Now, I mean, hopefully you can use those to shed some light on how we can help you av alleviate some of those pain points with a specialized shop floor scheduling solution for fabricators. Uh, we certainly appreciate your time today uh, for spending it with us, and uh, thank you all for participating, and good afternoon, and good evening, and good night, wherever you are.